WOCA. has the largest microphone in broadcasting and then another normal size one <laughs> and this is the show that Joe come where Joe comes in and explains what he does when he gets that call from somebody who's distraught and says you know I have your magnet on my refrigerator I never thought I'd need to call you guys and and now I got a tree on my roof and and so if you have a question for Joe this is a good time to call in the number is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline 622 WOCA Joe Reichel is your host right now and he's with Damage Control <laughs> Services and yep. there and I, I've got magnets I've got two of your magnets on my refrigerator awesome Yes. You're supposed to give one away. I will. Okay. But I wanted to remember where I put it, see? <laughs> <laughs> so I put two. I think we have one on the refrigerator here. Yeah, I stuck a few of them around. Oh, did I was you? Leaving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, there's been some, some magnet sightings around the county. <laughs> right, you should ask all your, all your Facebook friends. Post a photo of the magnet. I, in fact, I'll start, I'll start it. I'll, okay. I'll go home and take a photo of the magnet on my refrigerator. I like it. Right next to the Coca-Cola thermometer. And, uh, <laughs> I've, and there you go. I've got one. Uh, I've, I need to post it probably today. It was uh, stuck on Joe's Joe's truck with uh, the w, WOCA oh, really? <laughs> logo right there next to it. So well, very cool. I'll post that today. And so you guys are very instrumental in the new studios that we're moving into. And I know we've mentioned it numerous times. but Right. Yeah, it, uh, but the work hasn't isn't done yet. Yesterday, Almost. we're getting closer. Mike Sobieski was there yesterday, uh, right? One of your partners, and they met met the uh, fire fire marshal there right. to go through the right. Make sure all the sprinklers or not sprinklers, sprinklers and uh, extinguishers were right. Okay, so I have a question about this <coughs> this whole process. Okay, In I probably won't know the answer, but I'll try. I bet you will. In order to move into a new place, you have all these inspections, right? Right. I've been at this place. Since 1984, off and on, and, st and continuously since 2002, I guess it would be, right? I've never seen another... Do they only do inspections once? They don't keep coming back? <laughs> um, not the type of inspections that we're having done. Uh, however, uh, probably the location where you're at with the mall, there'll be some periodic inspections just to make sure everything's okay with really? them all. Really? Uh, but you do have your extinguishers, your fire extinguishers, those get inspected. They so. do. Yeah, there's a guy who comes here every year. Oh. Yeah, he do, we do get the so fire get extinguisher inspection. Right. But, I mean, th nobody else As far as building inspections, no. I mean, a, 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 you know, a building that's owned by... You know, an outside company, probably they would check it regularly or right. you know, make sure everything's okay, but... You know, pretty much as long as somebody's paying their rent, they don't worry about it too much. So the good news is we have a buyer from my mom's home. Nice. It's all going to happen. Uh, the inspector said that certain things weren't correct, so we had to the home inspector? correct them, yes. But, but the question is I have about this. It was an old home. It was built in the 60s, okay? Okay. Did I bring this up before? I hope I didn't. I'm not. Gonna, well, like we've the, talked about your mom's home. Before. I know, but but the uh, the inspector said first of all there was no cutoff switch to on the uh, the circuit. Uh, what do you call it? The, the circuit the, breaker box. The breaker, yeah, right? breaker box. So we had to have a guy put one in there. Mm -hmm. So that must have. I mean, I'm sure a past inspection in the beginning. Right. So now, so the, so there are some new rules that you have to pass. Even if everything was up to code before, it may not be up right. to code this now. Is, that's one main switch that if something goes wrong, you can go ahead and sh shut all the electric down right. versus going through and flipping each breaker. Plus, you know, none of the sockets in the house, uh, electrical outlets, I should say, um, had the, the three holes. They were right. all two holes. Right. So that, well, that didn't have to be changed specifically, but there was a new ground wire that had to be actually put into the ground, mm -hmm. which was... Uh, Eleven yeah, hundred dollars worth of, oh, wow. of what it was. Yeah, so in order to ground all of the. the I hours. guess. Yeah. So it, uh, it's amazing how that was not a requirement back in the sixties. I guess they just didn't know enough. Well, and you know, not necessarily knowing enough, but you know, they even nowadays we're building things according to today's code. Right. Twenty, thirty years from now, whatever we build today is going to probably be obsolete. Hmm. You know, you think about, you know, just think about electronic equipment. 
you know, we, you know, it wasn't too long ago we were using the VCRs, and right, now we're at, right, right. you know, went through the DVD phase, and now we're into Blu-ray. What'll be next? <laughs> Do you know I was listening to, on, on Clark Howard's show, he was talking about how because the economy has hurt some people, they have sized down their dwelling. Some of them are moving into apartments that are like 500 square feet. Yeah. As small as that. And so in order to make it all work, they have smaller things. Like uh, the, the shower is like the same size as you might find in the cabin of a boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's terrible. I, w- I wonder why we can't just fix the economy instead of shrinking well, our that showers. Would be good. You know, but then again, you th- you look at the other the other side of it. A lot of times, people are building building and or buying homes that are way large. You know, a Too lot large. larger than they need, right, or right. or bigger than that their needs are uh, as a family. Uh, and a lot of it's just for the luxury of it. So, you know, it's important for all of us to find, I think, you know, this is just me, my personal opinion, find a, a balance in there and not live beyond our means. Oh, you're conservative in that way. I am, too. Now, do, you, do you ever have a request, though, to size down? Like, can you make my bathroom smaller so that I will have more bedroom or something like that well in, in working with a you know a new home or a, a remodel project we can you know we take into consideration everything that that homeowners want uh, for example um, yesterday I, w- I was with a uh, client of ours who had a flood in her home and she had tile down or uh, carpet and okay. she wants tile so we went to the tile store together, and we're looking at different, you know, different things. And um, she has a hard time picking, you know, just making a decision. And she told me this. That's why she wanted me to go with her so that I could help her, you know, pick some things that look at good together and, right. and talk through it. Right, right, right. Uh, make sure it's functional and also is going to look good. <clears throat> there were certain things that she wanted and then there were certain things that she had to have, you know, like the wants and then the, the needs. Okay, okay. Right. So we're, we're going through these, and, you know, there was a certain type of floor that she wanted in the showers. And, you know, it's not really a, a, a practical tile, uh-huh, uh-huh. but that's what she wants. And what makes it impractical? Uh, just the type of the type of material that it is okay um i mean it, it's it has its benefits it's good and it's bad so and you're talking about in the bathroom in, in the in the shower floor well, yeah in, so, the, in the shower itself right okay so you know we, we're looking at different things and she picked a tile out that would work but it wasn't what she wanted so we're looking at what she wanted and what you know and she finally picked one she goes that makes me happy and so that's what, you know, kind of a long way to get around to your answering your question. Pretty much we work with the client in order to hmm. figure out what their wants are, what their needs are, and merge the two of them together within their budget so that they get what they want. So do you give feedback? <coughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing it's not easy always because you know that you kind of st- step in into an area that they have a want and you just try and warn them about that want is not practical but but do you do that i mean i, w- I would appreciate that if, I, if it was me if, if i were saying to you you know what i'm looking at i'm looking at having these tiles you say you know larry they're gonna break or, or they're gonna well it's i mean sometimes you know another client for example she wanted tile in her home but she wanted to make sure it was not a slippery tile yes so the tile that that she picked out for the kitchen ended up in fact being an outdoor tile so this Uh tile even though it is i mean it was like walking on sandpaper really is what it was more porous it was yeah it was way more than how do you wash that well it would be so you know water mop it wet mop but it was way it was a the the anti slip on it was way more than anyone would ever need in a in a kitchen. Okay, right. This is something you'd put out on your front porch or you know somewhere where it would get rain. And you know if a child would run across that floor and fall, it cut them up. Yeah, it would just yeah. skin them up. So you know I told her I said you know and she wanted it so you know she wouldn't slip and fall. But right. they're also thinking about selling the home. So. 
you know, these are things that right. a, a new homeowner would look at that for and go, that's got to go. <laughs> so you knew, you told her in advance. Right. I mean, that was, yeah. you know, tactfully got to tell her, you know, that's a good floor, but here's the downside to it. You might not want to use it in the kitchen. If you want to tile your back porch, we could do that. So, um, you know, you just kind of got to go through different things. And a lot of times people don't know what they don't know. This they don't know the different types of tile or the different places to put them and and that's one thing that you know the tile industry is going towards is putting labels on where these tiles should be used and and what the best possible places to use these are yeah this is probably a stretch here but do you know as we're as we're moving out of this studio into the new one we're throwing a lot of stuff away and i'm just speaking about my office alone Okay. And, and the question was, well, if, you, if you're throwing it away, why did you have it in the first place? Why did you hold on to it? And so the stretch part of what I'm going to bring to you is this, that if somebody's house has been damaged and now they're forced to be in a position where they're remodeling, making new decisions about what you're going to do to replace what was broken, um, the stretch is and maybe it's a question, do they ever say to you, you know, this is kind of a blessing in disguise? Oh, yeah. That happens a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Well, a lot of times, they, you know, they're, you know, despite going through all the, the process, you know, because it is difficult, it is emotional, right, right. Uh, you're out of your home or you're out of your element, anyway and you've got these strange men working in your home and <laughs> fixing things you guys aren't that strange well you know look at look at robin mike <laughs> 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 but you know you've got the you know you've got these you've got these decisions <laughs> that you've got to make and and you're working with your insurance company you're working with your mortgage company all this added stress that you didn't have right right and in the end they look at it and they go well, this is, you know, this is better. Or I, I do like it. Yeah. You know. I always wanted to change those tiles or something like right. that, right? All right, let's go to the phone and uh, say good morning. You're on the air with Joe Reichel. Hey, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Larry. And hey. Yes, they are pretty strange. I mean, <laughs> they, just got the, they just got the GPS monitoring devices off their ankles. Come on, really? <laughs> 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 Joe, I got a quick question for you. Sure. Have you ever been called to restore a terrazzo floor? I mean, you're doing a remodel. There was flood damage, whatever, and the, and the property owner wanted to restore the terrazzo floor that had been under a carpet for 10 or 20 years. And uh, I'll hang up and get the answer, and you guys do good work. Thanks. Thank you very much for the call and the question. Uh, yes, um, there are companies that do that. Um, we've never really done that. We've worked with a company that did it, um, that we called them in to take care of a terrazzo floor and and. You know, it is something a lot of times, you know, things go through phases. And that's a, that's a great question because, you know, a lot of times people will go in and they'll cover those, cover that up. Or we've had homes where they've had uh, a wood floor down and they've put carpet over it. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh, right. you know, take the carpet up and they want to redo the wood. We've done that in several homes or, <clears throat> or you know, the old terrazzo, which is a beautiful floor. Uh, and it's a very durable floor. It needs to be maintained. Um, you know, a lot of times people will, you know, cover that over. Right. So, you know, they'll go back to the old of what what was, and that's where a lot of times you'll see different trends. You know, in in the flooring industry or in in home in the home industry as right, far as right, right. going back to previous styles. You know, terrazzo reminds me of it reminds me of the cafeteria at school. Am I right? Is that what the is that yeah, it's, commonly used for that? Well, they used to use it in a lot of homes. It oh, was in a, homes. Yeah, okay. a lot of lot of homes, uh, especially here in Florida, had it. Uh, a lot of malls, you know, buildings like that, or you know, commercial application because it is very durable. Um, as long as it was put down right and adhered right, it's it's going to be there forever, pretty much. Yeah. You know, the very chorus floor that you were describing that you sp talked the lady out of, um, I, I was asking how to clean it. It's, it seems like, you know, a mop would get torn up. <laughs> it's like mopping a sidewalk. I, I'm having a hard time imagining it. Well, and, and that's why, it, you know, one of those, those sponge mops or something like that. I oh, mean, it would be torn up. It right? would, it would, yeah. It wasn't really that rough, but it was. Yeah. Close. It, yeah. 
I mean, it had a glaze to it. But I can know, understand so. the slippery thing, too. And, in right. fact, you, you have a guy that you have access to. Mm-hmm. He came in here one time. Yeah. And he can actually take a slippery surface and he puts something on it, right? Yep. They coat it in order to keep it from being slippery. Now, what is the uh, product called again? Um, new, new Floors. Okay. And is it... I, and I probably asked this today. He was in here. But is it... Does it need to be redone every year? Yeah, or something? You, every okay. so often you'll re recoat that floor in order to keep it to the property, you know, and that a lot depends on the traffic that right. it gets. Do you know there was a wow. and that's great for commercial applications and things like that. But residential, you can use the same, and and that's where you know the floor that we picked out yesterday. It is a very shiny, smooth floor. Right. I need to post a picture of the tile we this tile selection on Facebook. I need to do that. That'll be good. That'll be a good post. So now we're about halfway through the hurricane season. Knock on wood, so far nothing too bad. Yesterday, uh, Sunday, there was kind of a microburst that happened. Yeah, we've had we've had these little pop up storms that have come through and and created a um, a lot of damage in in areas. And yeah. that's where you know it is important to make sure that you're prepared for something like that. I heard something last night. What'd you hear? Fall. <laughs> I don't know what it hit, but I heard something fall. Okay. I'm imagining. I'm imagining it was a limb and probably hit a tool shed somewhere in in the neighborhood. Oh wow! But something sounded like a big boom, and I, I didn't see any homes that were damaged. But who knows? Yeah, these uh, and that's one thing. You know, these pop up storms that we have, they can create quite a bit of damage. Uh, we haven't had any real problems. You know, the last couple right. weeks, thankfully, but. You know, if we get, you know, these winds that come through, and I forget who I was talking to yesterday. They were talking about these little tornadoes. It's kind of like a wind tornado. It's not really a, it doesn't go up into the clouds, right. but it's, you know, the winds create a, a, a funnel like sort of. Like a cherry of. tornado or whatever? I don't remember what the name of it was. I wish I could have. Devil, wish. Dirt Devil? Yeah, Dirt Devil. There you go. Did you ever see, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the Dirt Devil sweepers, yeah. Kind of like that. <laughs> no, I don't mean the vacuum cleaner. Oh, the, I thought that's what you were talking about. No, I thought I thought Dirt Devil was the expression like if you're out in the desert or something and you see this little funnel just kind of traveling across the and it's not really going to hurt anything. It might might pick I thought up. that was the Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> I, think, I think it is the Tasmanian <laughs> Dirt Devil. Yeah, this week has been busy for us as far as <laughs> floods. We've had quite a few calls for floods. It was poor. Well, that microburst on Sunday. Caused a, a little local flood. Ew. Well, these these uh, these have been um, the one was an air conditioning uh, thought to be an air conditioning leak, but it turned out to be a plumbing leak. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And well, one was that a explains it better than washing uh-huh. machine. So, and you have a phone call. Good morning. You're on there with Joe. Dust devil, Larry. Dust devil. Dust Dust devil. devil. What did That's I call? what you get out in the Mojave and all that. The little. <laughs> What did I call it? Dirt Devil? Dirt Devil, yeah. <laughs> Dirt Devil. Okay. Talk to y'all later. Thank you. Dust <laughs> thanks devil. for the thanks for the clarification. But I did see one. I was out there. I took a trip one time and I saw this. Hey, look at it. There's that Dirt Devil. There's the Dirt Devil. But I didn't have anybody on the phone tell me hey, it's a Dust Devil. <laughs> I I don't know that I've ever seen one. Uh man, I don't think it would cause any harm. It might take a baseball hat off of a kid or something. Uh, the phone number, if you'd like to call right now, is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 6229622. Joe Reichel from Damage Control. Well, the cousin companies got the word control in there. There you go. And and you both helped out with the, the new WOCA studios. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we've got another um, new construction project we're working on, too. It's a, it is a bathroom... Kind of a remodel. I get well. It's not really. It's an addition. Uh huh. A bathroom addition. Is that the one that you're building in like a factory? Mm-hmm. All right. Explain that because that that almost looked like um, like a manufactured home facility. Is that what that was? Uh, no. It's it's a manufacturing facility though, and they're they're adding doing a little addition to it. Okay. Um, in order to to help the employees so they don't have to walk clear across the the building back and forth. So. So what is the benefit of actually manufacturing a home in a factory and then dragging it out on a trailer? What's the advantage of doing it that way as opposed to just building it on the site? What's what's the advantage? As far as manufactured housing? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you'd have all of your all of your materials and your your tools and all your labor in one central location. You can also 
form an assembly line of some sort to have everybody organized and and you know go through the whole process it is amazing how fast they can put one of those homes together and it's because they've got all of the supplies and everything ready to go right. all the the labor the experienced labor and trains so is that to do the their job. same thing as a, as a mobile home i mean just without the wheels well yeah that's yes so it is the exact same thing just pretty w- much without the wheels right they just put wheels on it just to get it there right yep Really? So, I mean, it's as strong as, as a, a site build home? Well, um, yes. I mean, they, they've got, I don't really know the, the specs on it, uh-huh. but, I mean, they need to build them to certain specifications in order to withstand well, the, reason I'm asking. You know, the building codes. So, um, just like a mobile home. You know, that had, you know, is pulled there on wheels. Well, that's designed to be mobile. Well, uh, once you fasten it down, it's designed <laughs> to be fastened down. <laughs> well, I guess the reason I'm asking is because at this time of year, every time we make, make any mention at all of the possibility of storms, we're always saying, because they give us the words, uh, we're always saying, if you live in a, in a manufactured home, make sure you know where the shelters are. Right. Okay, well, why aren't them, why are they more likely to have a problem than the next door neighbor who might... Well, a manufactured home is is a mobile home. I mean, they they fall under the same category. Oh, okay. So it just became a politically sensitive right. word or something. I guess so. Oh, okay. But uh, manufactured housing, I mean. So I should have a manufactured phone. I don't have a mobile phone. It's, it's, there you it's go. degrading to me <laughs> to call it a mobile phone. It's a manufactured phone. Good morning. You're on the air with Joe Reichel. Uh, good morning. Uh, where I came from, uh, upstate New York, or I came down here, they had a place where they manufactured these homes, and they were called modular homes. They had two by six uh, outer walls, perimeter walls, so that they could put in the in- better insulation and uh, better pathways for the uh, utilities, etc. And I was amazed at the uh, two by twelves used for the roof rafters so that in the future you could use the upstairs as uh, for additional uh, rooms or whatever. And uh, they were put on a regular foundation. Uh, they they uh, specialized in putting in a regular uh, basement-type foundation, and they were, I think, anchored better than a stick-built home. Right. Yeah, they're, but, they're uh, put together quite well and, and, you know, create a very nice home. Well, I, uh, I saw, I knew one place, a little community, where they had a couple of these uh, modular homes and a couple of stick-built homes, and uh, there was a bad storm, and the trees fell down, and the tree fell on the uh, modular home, and all it did was uh, tear up a couple of shingles where this, a similar tree, same size, basically everything else, fell on a stick-built home, and it punched a big hole in the roof. Right. So uh, at that time, I was very, very impressed with some of these modular homes. And it comes all equipped, the wall, inside walls, everything is finished. The only thing they got to do is hook up the electric and the plumbing and, uh, you know, and finish it off and uh, move in. That was it. Yeah, a lot of... You have to worry about weather delays and every other kind of things, you know, supply delays, uh, et cetera. Right. Yeah, because everything's put together, basically put together and then brought out at one time. It's either Sweden or Norway uh, builds them, but they're like twice the cost of a regular site-built home. But, uh, you know, they're highly prized as far as I know. Anyway, that was uh, what I thought I would know. That's what I know about modular homes or manufactured homes. Yeah, they have a great program, and thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your call. Yeah, they're they are definitely a you know it's a good a good product, a good home. Um, you know, they all have their benefits. They all have their everything, you know, pros and cons. Downs, and yeah, pros and cons to everything. So, so the one question I have about them, it seems like the roof is not as steep. Is that the word? In other words, the attic is not as deep. Well, it really depends. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean you. 
a lot of times you would never know the really? difference. Yeah. So have you had, uh, th does it provide you with any different challenges or different, like when you have damage to a, a manufacturer's home? Well, um, and here's the thing. It depends on the damage, and it depends a lot of times on, on what it is. For example, right now we're building a home, or not building, we're, we're working on a home that had a tree fall on it, uh, a lot of water damage because of this, and it is the home is built. Uh, it's not on a it's not on a concrete floor. It's built you know with a crawl space under it. Oh, okay, okay. So all of that moisture has gotten into the home and you know into the floor, and you know it has airflow under the floor, whereas a home that is built like a block house that has a um, is built on a slab right, right you know right. that's concrete so yeah your concrete will get moist and you'll have to dry it, it you know it will absorb water uh, but it's a lot easier to dry that type of a floor a floor system right for right, example right. rather than a you know trusses and plywood floor trusses and plywood with a crawl space so there's all kinds of different you know, depending on what's, you know, the the type of structure. Um, Friday, I think it was Friday, I went out to a two-story home. Uh, bathroom on the second story leaked, and so you have that floor space between the the floor upstairs and the ceiling downstairs. Right, right, right. And you've got that whole area in there that has, you know, you don't know where the water Take has Taken in gone. the water, right, right, yeah, right. The water can travel in that area, so... Um, like I said, every home has its yeah. So you got to analyze and, and kind of. Y so your first step has to be uh, well after speaking to the people is to analyze it. You have to figure right. it out. Figure out what's what caused it. Find you know stop what's caused it. Ex ex you know and then examine how far the damage has traveled. What it's you know what needs to be taken out immediately. Right. So and a lot of times you know you won't like carpet for example. Water can get in your carpet and into your pad, you know, pad underneath the carpet, right. and go a lot farther than you realize. <laughs> I bet it does, yeah. Um, the pad acts like a sponge, and it will absorb the water, typically along the walls, mm. it'll extend out, and that's where we've got, you know, moisture meters that we use, and we'll probe the carpet and find how far the water has traveled, because, right. you know, the water, the carpet's not... You know, it takes a while for the water to saturate that padding and then come up through the carpet. So, you know, an entire room may be wet and you don't even realize it. You can't feel it that's, by touching the carpet. Yeah, and that's... I had that happen in, when I lived in Bellevue and I had a small house down there. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was here in Ocala Park Estates. Mm -hmm. I had a small house and the uh, air conditioner was doing that. It was right. leaking, and the whole under pad of the, of the carpet was wet. Mm -hmm. You'd walk on the thing, and you squishy. You just say, "What the heck happened here?" Mm -hmm. And you know, everybody blamed the dog, of course. <laughs> but then a guy who had your kind of skills came out and determined that it wasn't the dog at all; that it was the air conditioner doing it. Right. Not, not. I guess not unusual, huh? No, and that's it's not unusual, and that's where you know. I was talking to a gentleman the other day, and he said he never expected something like this to happen. I said, "Well, you know, if you own a home." It's going to happen. You're going to have things that come up. It's just like having a car. You can't have a car and never expect to have any maintenance. Radio stations are the same way. Right. Believe it or not. <laughs> All right. Isn't everything. <laughs> All right, Joe, what is your phone number? My phone number is 352-817-6574. Or you can email me, joe at damageflorida.com. Ask for one of the magnetic uh, business cards. Put it on your refrigerator. Always have Joe's number handy. You might not need it, let's hope. Uh, you might have a friend who needs it. You can give him the number right away. Yep. Thank, thank you, Joe. Thank you. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala. ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. Doctors in Dallas say former President George W. Bush is in good spirits after heart surgery to insert a stent in a blocked artery.